Isidia, spiritual slothfulness, is something that Christians have fought against since Jesus came the first time. It is what Paul is writing about to the church in Thessalonica. Now, you may wonder, what do we mean by spiritual slothfulness? How often do you get to use that word? Well, there's really two different kinds. you got the kind of job of the hut model. Everyone knows who he is, right? From Star Wars. If you don't know, come see me. We'll watch some films together. Your life will be better for it. <laughs> but he's just like really fat, gross, lazy guy that just kind of slugs around, ruining the world. So there's that kind of ice idea. And it's very easy to spot that kind of ice idea. It's also kind of easy to avoid. Just don't become Jabba the Hutt, right? Just don't do it. But the second kind, the kind they had in Thessalonica, is a much more dangerous kind because it's subtler. And it's frequently wrapped up in really beautiful language. And it looks kind of, sort of pious when you're doing it frequently. What happened there is they had all of these people who got so excited about Jesus coming back. Now they'd only waited like 20 or 30 years at this point. So they didn't even have to wait very long. But they got so excited about it. That they decided that they were just going to devote all of their time to ascetic practices in the extreme. Now you know what the estheticians are, right? They're the ladies that make your skin nice. It's a different kind of asceticism than making your skin nice. <laughs> but they would devote themselves to prayer and to the contemplation of who God is. Which is a really good thing to do. These are the kind of people that read their scripture every day. And guess how often they prayed the daily office, I'm sure. Daily, every single day, like you're supposed to do it. And they went to church once a week, and they did all those kinds of things that you're supposed to do. But they forgot to get out of their chairs and to be Jesus in the world. They became spiritually like Jabba the Hutt. Because they didn't do anything. <clears throat> that kind of idea is a lot easier to slip into, isn't it? Last week we talked about, do you want to be a saint or not? And I suggested to you that if you don't want to be a saint, then you're not following Jesus Christ and living like a Christian. Because to follow Jesus means to become friends with him, which means to become a saint. And to become a saint, should you pray the daily office every day? You're doing right, you should, right? Should you be the kind of person that reads scripture regularly? <coughs> of course you should. Should you be the kind of person that goes to worship every Sunday? Of course you should. That's not enough. Because if all you're doing is sitting there and thinking and praying, but you never get up and do anything, it's just me and Jesus. Forget the rest of you. You've missed the point. Do you know of any churches that have ever done that? that have slipped into that kind of spiritual idea. It's easy, isn't it? What about you? Do you slip into that kind of spiritual idea, Or are you the kind of person that gets up and lives your life in such a way that as people see you in the world, not because you're wiping a Bible at them in their face, that never works anyways, but because you live your life like the kind of person who is joyful. And they say, I want some of what he's got in his life. Are you the kind of person that invites others to know Jesus? 
What about us as a congregation? How often do we leave our pews and chairs and invite people who don't yet know Jesus to get to know him? Or are we wrapped up in good things so much so that we forget to go out? I want to leave you with a story about an atheist who was interviewed way back when I was in college. And he said he hates Christians. And then if you said, well, why do you hate Christians? It seems like a weird thing to hate. And he said, well, all of you Christians talk about loving God so much. And you talk about Jesus and how important he is in your life and how he saved you from your sins. And if I don't get to know him, I might end up going to hell. And then, none of you ever bother to tell me about him or invite me to get to know him. Man, how much must you hate me that you'd rather me go to hell than tell me about Jesus? I pray that we never slip into that second title of Isidia. Amen.